Good morning, everyone. Um, I was struck there recently, I was searching um, the internet and I was reminded of the uh, filter bubble, which is a term used by Eli Pariser to describe how algorithms are used to personalise um, your search strategies. And what I was doing is I was actually watching the Rugby World Cup and Ireland's great victory over France. And uh, I really started to wonder, well, what was the international perspective on that? I mean, there were so many injuries, like what did people think? And when I did that search, what I found was the familiar and the comfortable. I found, uh, I found entries on um, Irish and UK newspapers, some familiar blogs. Um, but what was missing was the international perspective. What did the Australians, the New Zealanders, the Argentinians think? So what made me wonder really is what happened? When did the world disappear from the World Wide Web? And uh, I suppose what we are is we're a team of um, librarians and our remit is to support academic teaching, student learning, and we, uh, we manage the relationship with schools and colleges. And I suppose at the core of what we think of ourselves as librarians is that we see it as a knowledge discipline. And what we did three years ago is we changed how we organise fundamentally. We moved to a team-based model and we introduced a new teaching and learning strategy. So why did we do that? Um, what we felt was that our old subject librarian model was no longer working as effectively for us as we, as we wished. Um, what we felt is that we were... Um, we had so many calls in our time, so many things that required sort of energy and sort of input, and it was very hard as individuals to be expert in everything, and I think that was where we were struggling. So what we did is we moved to this team-based approach, and uh, what we find from that is that we're now operating much more effectively. I mean, the, the strength of working in a team has allowed us to deliver what we couldn't have done as, as a group of, of, of individuals. <coughs> And I suppose what we're really trying to do is our challenge really is that we're trying to be expert in too, in too many fields, really. Um, and I suppose the other main thing we find is that we now feel that we have more energy, we have more time to actually devote to the actual learning needs of students and to the academic requirements as well. A key component of our model was actually um, given each of us individually the authority and the autonomy to be experts or specialists in particular fields. And we feel that's allowed us to really grow. Um, and um, what we all have is we have a remit to look towards best practice, um, to inform each other, and, uh, and I suppose to, to share as well. And what we've done in the last three years, my colleagues have presented at 33 conferences, um, papers and posters, and have also been involved in the writing of nine and journal articles and uh, book chapters as well. So we feel in terms of what we're offering to the, I suppose, to the community, it's, it's something that, that, that's something that's really important to us. So what we did in terms of our teaching and learning strategy, what we have is two core elements. One and the first element is we focus on working directly with key program coordinators to understand the needs of the program. And I suppose that's right through all the phases of transition from, from from, from year one right through. And secondly, what we do is we focus on providing resources to support the, the student-centred needs of the students themselves, and we have a suite of resources that sort of assist with that. Um, in thinking of threshold and concepts, Ray, La Ray Land talks about, I suppose, that whole challenge for students in dealing with, with information which is unsettling, which is troublesome, uh, which is sometimes risky. But it's that sort of engagement with knowledge which usually sort of fundamentally challenges their understanding of a, a topic or a discipline. Um, I myself recall a particular situation I was hitching to college in the early 80s. It was the height of the troubles in the north. And I remember the shock I experienced when the driver said, a news bulletin came on about an issue in the north. And the driver made a comment around a topic that I'd never really heard expressed in that way before. And I remember being taken aback. But afterwards I reflected on it and I realised that really what it was doing was holding up a mirror to my own expectations, my own assumptions, my own bias from where I came from. And as a student of politics at the time, I realised that that fundamentally changed my mindset as, as to how we go about, how I go about my studies and how I needed to bring my thought process to a new level in terms of how I critically engage with the topics and the discipline. So for me that was a very important threshold moment in my time. And uh, once that happened, I could never look at, at things in the same way again because it fundamentally changed my worldview. I think that was crucially important in terms of 
of um, where we're coming from. So students themselves, I suppose, have a comfort in the familiarity, um, in the simplicity and in the ease of the internet. And I suppose also in suppose what we often give them in, in terms of basic reading lists. I suppose what we would argue is that we believe for them to grow, for them to be research experts, for them to be global citizens, they need to have the opportunity to engage with information and knowledge in a much more um, holistic way. We feel that's a core threshold concept for them in terms of uh, growing their, their engagement with, with their disciplines. Um, the realisation that knowledge can be complex, it can be messy, it can be difficult to find, to interpret, it can be challenging, but also that information as it's presented to students uh, online often has a personalised aspect that they're not aware of. These are all very unsettling and very troubling um, um, concepts for students to take on board. And as Pariser says, what you want may not always be what you actually need. And I suppose the big challenge for us in engaging with our students is, is helping them to recognise those, I suppose, information or knowledge gaps in, in how they approach their disciplines. So for our students, we feel that popping that filter bubble um, is a crucial step to expanding their horizons and to um, their boundaries. Not just with the world of online information, um, where Paris takes it from, but just with the knowledge of their discipline and with the knowledge of their, uh, of their, their academic learning as well. So that's why, I suppose, in the library, um, we're not interested in creating standalone um, library information skills modules. What we feel fundamentally is that the whole process of knowledge and the whole process of information is core to the whole intrinsic academic process itself. It's part of uh, the learning. It's entwined with the learning of the discipline. Each student, okay, I'm nearly finished. Each student will have their own personal journey of growth and within their discipline. And like me that day back in the 80s, <coughs> um, they're going to find their defining opportunities and their defining moments in places that they can never have expected. So what we ask of academics then is we really ask them to consider what they really want the students to do when they engage with the information of their discipline. Um, what are their expectations of their students? Um, what do they want them? In what way or where do they want them to be challenged? And how can we as librarians engage and help? In the words of Barbara Pfister, our ambition is to seek those places in the programme where transformative learning is happening. Thanks very much. <laughs>